We ask you to please clear the aisles, please.
testing. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 
I know that my Redeemer liveth, that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave. And the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. As touching the dead, that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man so let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions and if it were not so, I, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? 
Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But we appeal to you now, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. We come to celebrate. We come to lift up the name of our God and to praise him for the gift of Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. To all of the covenanted disciples of the Beth Bethesda Baptist Church, complimenting the vision, the ministry, and God's kingdom agenda. To the entirety of this worshiping congregation, acknowledging and recognizing each and every one who share now in their respective places, those in the servanthood of the kingdom of God, those who are in leadership and, and throughout our community, state and nation. From the onset of this celebration, we acknowledge each and every one of you, thanking God for your presence with us today. Let us now, in the true spirit of adoration to our God and giving to him the highest praise and honor, let us magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Reverend Larray Hardin Shabbat. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather today to celebrate the life of your son, Reverend Dr. Allen Paul Weaver, Jr. And God, although we feel grief and a little heavy in heart, we gather in joy because we know he's in glory with you. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we surrender this moment over to you right now, eternal and wise master. Come into our hearts, come into our minds, and come into our hearing, Lord. Enter now into this space. We entrust it all unto you. All of our cares, all of our hurts are upon you. Join with me now as we pray in the manner in which the Lord has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors 
and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Why don't you be seated in the presence of the Lord? As we have come today from every quarter of the metropolitan area across the Empire State, yea, this nation, to the Weaver family. This is Weaver. As you sit and share together, we unite in spirit in this time of sorrow and grief but allowing the joy that comes from knowing the Lord to bolster and strengthen us. As we share together in the worship experience, I trust and pray that all of you have in uh, your hand a copy of the order of service by which we will share and proceed today. Please know that it reflects the desire and wishes of the family and we're going to ask each and every one who has the privilege and opportunity to share uh, in this place today in whatever manner in which you are to come forward please be considerate of this family and the Bethesda church and may everything that is done yes redound to the praise and glory of God, but may it indeed be reflective of your love, your respect, and your honor for this great man of God, Dr. Weaver. Pray now as the Spirit lifts us in the worship experience. We sing together, great hymn of the church, how great thou art.
lifted in spirit by way of song. Let us humble ourselves at the altar of the sacred text. Our Old Testament meditation and reading will come from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 11 and verse 14 it will be ministered by Reverend Dr. Johnny Turner the Mount Sinai Baptist Church of Orlando Florida our New Testament meditation will come from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 through 58 context verse comes from the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 7 through 11 and will be ministered and shared with us by the Reverend Dr. Nelson C. Dukes Jr., former moderator, pastor of the Fountain Spring Baptist Church. And then we will unite our faith and agree together as Reverend Dr. Clifford Jones, pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church of Charlotte, North Carolina, will come and offer and minister in the prayer of comfort. I'm going to ask the audio ministry, if they would, to activate this mic. Thank you so very much. Thank you. To the presiding pastor today, our scripture in recognizing this occasion in his theological context of God's purpose. Third chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes, beginning with verse 1 through 11 and then verse 14. Hear he these humble words. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it as we live. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy words. 
for the edification of our souls and the implementation of our lives. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 through 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on and corruption and this mortal should have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the same that is written death is swallowed up in victory O oh, death where is thy sting O oh, grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the Lord but thanks but thanks, but thanks be the God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost, for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the Lord, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is not the first time you've seen us like this. We've been here before. We haven't always sat in the seat with the family. It hasn't always been pastor. But we've been here before. In this world where we live with, with 
temporality and indestructible. In this world where we are confronted by sin, sadness, and sorrow, during these lifespans that you've blessed us with, we are learning to live daily with anxiety, fears, trials and tribulations in this world. A world that you made, a world that you destroyed by water and then a world that you remade and gave a promise that you'd never do what you did before with water. But even in this new world, this different world, you know we still battle with some of the same old systemical issues. We still battle with your nemesis, death. You defeated it through your son, the Christ at Calvary, by raising him from that dead place where there was death and you brought life and your son looked back on death and dying and said all power now in heaven and earth is in my hands. So Lord, as we live in this world where there are all the old things that bring fresh tears. As we live in these bodies, as they grow older, they begin to lean to the left and to the right, where our steps are shortened, where our memories become limited, where our flexibility becomes inflexibility. Lord, we've been here before but each time it's fresh and brings new pain, new sadness, new grief. But Lord, you demonstrated that you are the Lord of life. For in the midst of our sickness and sadness and sorrow and pain and bereavement, you reach way down in the midst and touch to each one of us with an affirmation of love and given us an, another day of life with a reasonable portion of health and strength. So we say thank you. I don't ask you to be with the family for you've been with them and you've been walking with them and that's how they've been able to make it thus far. You've been with us and we want to say thank you. Ask now that you would continue to guide us. You can do what nothing else that we may take can do. Tylenol, Advil, believe. We can take all of that, Lord, but you're the only one who can be with us as we bear our burdens during the heat of the day. You have brought us from a mighty long way. And uh, we know that you're with us right now. And we want to say thank you. So Lord, you do look and you do see some sadness and some, some, some sadness and some tears. You see all of that, but that's not a lack of faith, Lord. That's because we love deeply and we love hard. This person and the Reverend Paul Allen Weaver, Jr. We loved him still love him <laughs> ah, and we thank you that you've blessed him to cross over on the other side he's enjoying and experiencing his comfort on the other side I just ask now that as we walk through this service of celebration that you will reach down and give us some comfort that in the midst of all that's going on would you just remind us 
that you are the God of the living and of the dead. If you would just remind us that weeping may endure for a night, but God knows there's joy in the morning. If you would just reach down and remind us that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. If you would just reach down just a little bit and, and rock us right easy and, and let us know that everything is all right. We know that the trump will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. But while the trumpet tar is getting ready to blow, just help us to stand boldly and affirm that the Lord is my rock and my salvation. Grant us the comfort sufficient. Grant us the comfort sufficient. But in comforting us, Lord, don't let us become complacent. But help us to work while it is yet day. Bless our eulogist and grant him the words that we need to hear from you. We thank you, Lord. Are you listening, Lord? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you so much for the gift given to us in pastor, in husband, in granddaddy, daddy, in brother, big brother, and friend to us all. We do ask this prayer in the spirit of comfort, that spirit that is holy. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, in the name of our faith, The Sanctuary Choir of Bethesda Baptist will now come and we're going to help them sing, I am redeemed. <laughs>
we have made our way out in this time of celebration today, I, I just want to thank the officers and the membership of Shiloh. For more reasons than one, I've got to confess, as I made my way to New Rochelle from Rockland County, I was thinking and I said, Lord, we've got smoke from Canada. And it's forecasted to be about 86 degrees today. And Lord, a lot of melanin is going to be <laughs> in the sanctuary. <laughs> but we feel none of it. <laughs> what a wonderful atmosphere and spirit to worship them. Thank you, Shiloh. Hallelujah for being so hospitable and accommodating. Praise the Lord. We share now in the worship experience that requires some discipline. In the 36 years that I've been in ministry here in New York, I've never met this young man that's complimenting the worship experience that playing that's playing the organ never if i have i didn't know but listen let's establish a relationship <laughs> right now i know you may not know me but keep your eyes on me <laughs> and if i do this just melodically fill the atmosphere. Amen? All right. We're going to have uh, individuals who will come now and give their reflections and tributes. And as they are indicated singularly in the program, understand that each one of these individuals who share with us now represents a larger body and contingent of, of organizations and souls that Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. left an imprint and impacted. I'm, I'm looking at those who are to come before you now. And there are many of us, even in, in ministry, will live a lifetime and never do and never have the influence of Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. So we honor his memory today. Each and every one of them have, I know, a personal piece they can add about Dr. Weavers. He was a brother beloved. And my God, what a friend to have. So they come. Now, I said all of that as a prelude to those of you who are to follow. We want you to share. You ought to share. But I'm going to ask you that you restrain yourselves and limit yourselves in your reflection to about two minutes. After two, you'll know your time is up. <laughs> Amen? I'm going to ask that we, 
as we share together, everyone who is to come will be attentive to your place in this now period of tributes and remarks and our resolutions if they are to come. We're going to hear from the, a selected group of elected officials, the mayor of New Rochelle, the Honorable Norm Brandon, Branson, I, I tell you there's a D on the name here. I apologize. West Jefferson County Executive, Honorable George Latimer, and the Honorable Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins. They will come and I'll return with the clergy representation. The mayor, he comes. or Brandon, either one, I'm, I'm honored to be in the company of, uh, of friends and neighbors. Uh, to the Weaver family, to the Bethesda family, to the Shiloh family, our hosts, to the family of New Rochelle and New York that we all share, good morning. Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. was a giant. He was a giant in every way that a man can be a giant. Intellectually, spiritually, morally, a giant in his sheer presence filling a room, and a giant for a city, for our city, that he leaves at once diminished by his absence and enduringly strengthened by his deeds. In the two minutes allotted to me, <laughs> I will not even attempt to enumerate those deeds or the many occasions in which his leadership rallied our community to do better and be better. Those are subjects for an hour-long address. Instead, I share with you the memory, the image, that when I consider Pastor Weaver is fixed in my mind's eye. Perhaps surprisingly for a man of motion and action, the image I return to over and over again is one of stillness. Eyes closed tight, hand sometimes on the brow. You all, I see you nodding, you know this look. If you didn't know better, you almost might think he was nodding off. But no, the reverse. Deep thought. Deep concentration, deep listening. At a time when so many speak before they think. Not that a politician would ever witness such behavior. <laughs> At a time when so many exercise the mouth before the brain. Pastor Weaver got the order right. So that when those eyes opened, when the hand came down from the brow, when he rose to the pulpit, his great voice filling the church and shaking the souls within it, his words rang with the wisdom and truth that he had shared and stored within himself. It gave him the power to soothe, the power to rouse, to stir righteous fury, or to nurture gentle love in the right measures and at the right time. Above all, he had the power to inspire men and women, flawed and imperfect though we are, to make of ourselves instruments of God's will. For a man of the cloth, there can be no higher purpose and no higher praise. Let none doubt that Reverend Alan Paul Weaver Jr. is today in glory. For those now left to carry on his work, May his enduring example guide us always toward justice. And as we say in my faith, may his memory be a blessing. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and uh, Dr. Lowe, I have put the stopwatch on just to make sure you abide by the rules of the church. Those of us who are here, Mayor Branson, the great state senator, uh, Andrea Stewart Cousins, my other colleagues in local office, we are here to show that the secular gives way to the spiritual. In a moment like this, we have lost a great man. And in a whole lifetime, you don't meet many people that reach that level of greatness. He was a man of letters, an accomplishment, intellectual accomplishment, in holding a doctorate. He was a man who from that pulpit could rise uh, emotions inside of you, whatever your faith tradition is, and make you feel a sense of the Almighty. But he was a pastor to all of us. Whether you were in the congregation at Bethesda, here at Shiloh, a member of the Baptist tradition, the Roman Catholic tradition, the Jewish tradition, all of us secular, and not just in New Rochelle, but across the county of Westchester. This man pastored all of us, all of us. And I know from my Christian faith, the thing that he believed, which I believe, is that Jesus is Lord. And believing that, we know that he is in paradise, which is why this is a homegoing celebration and not a morning. Brother Lowe, I want to give my remaining 22 seconds to the great state senator, Andrea Stewart Cousins. Good morning, church. The Reverend Dr. Lowe to the clergy, but mostly to the amazing family of this great man. I bring my love, my condolences, my understanding that yes, he was amazing. And how do we ever fill this void? But I also come with the assurance, I had the picture in my head, that we were shocked down here, but in heaven the gates were flown open. They were open. And he walked in. And of course, Jesus said, well done. Well done, my great and faithful servant, well done. So I follow my colleagues, the great mayor, the great county executive, and all in saying, he was my pastor. I don't live in New Rochelle. I have the honor and the privilege of representing the state of New York as the head of the Senate. And I know there are people here from all over this country and all over this world who want to just say goodbye. But I come not as all of that, but as somebody who knew about him before I had the privilege of representing New Rochelle. And I knew about him not only as a service to the church, but his ability to go beyond the walls of any church and beyond the understanding of man to bring us to a place where we all felt responsible for our own spiritual growth, for our own spreading of the word of God, but mostly for each other. And he did it in the streets, in the halls of power. He did it everywhere and anywhere he was an example. I'm so proud to have known him so proud of what he's done. So grateful for the blessing of knowing him and the legacy that he's left. We will do him great honor to follow in his footsteps and understand that as long as we're here, we have work to do.
and we will do it with grace, with wisdom, with joy, with faith, and with the knowledge that if we do it right, we will join our Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. in heaven, seated with the Father. Amen, church, thank you so much. those members of clergy who are now to come that they will compliment this pulpit by speaking from this base. Now, they are not going to take a text. <laughs> Amen. Dr. Howard has traveled all the way from Florida, one of the best friends of Dr. Weaver. He's going to render and minister the eulogy today. Amen? Amen. Now, forgive me, I, I did not, as we progressed in service, uh, I wasn't notified who is present or who's absent. I can survey and tell the majority, but uh, Dr. Weaver was ecumenical. And so representing the clergy of New Rochelle, Bishop Martin Nelson of the Beezer Holiness Church of New Rochelle, followed by the Reverend Dr. Joe Albert Bush, Sr., pastor of the Walker Memorial Baptist Church in the Bronx and CEO of the Even So Send IU Missions Initiative. Amen. Dr. Weaver was indeed missional. So we're going to ask him to come representing the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity. We bless, are blessed to have the president sharing with us today in the person of Reverend Dr. Geraldine Harris. Amen. And because I will be speaking all day, I thought you would find it quite refreshing and relieving to have another voice of the United Missionary Baptist Association to address you in the person of the first vice moderator, the Reverend Dr. Renee F. Washington Gardner. And then the one who covers all of us in our uh, branch of Baptist testimony. We bless the Lord for the president of the Empire Missionary Baptist Convention and the dean of the Congress of Christian Education for the National Baptist Convention, former moderator, the Reverend Dr. Carl L. Washington. And then we are blessed of God to have this great arm of Zion represented here today, the American Baptist Churches of Metropolitan New York, Reverend Dr. Cheryl F. Dudley, the executive director of that work. They come now in that order. Remember now, I'll be watching you. <laughs> Is Bishop Nelson with us? All right. Dr. Joel Albert Bush.
1987, I took a flight out of John F. Kennedy International Airport, headed for eight African nations as a part of the 87 preaching team with the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. Alan Paul Weaver was on that flight with me. We visited eight different countries in Africa for mission work, but actually saw 16 different African nations. Alan Paul Weaver probably understood me and my passion for world missions better than any single person who I've ever known in my life, including my pastors. That was because Alan Paul Weaver was there with me when we saw the poor plight or the plight of the poor people of Malawi who until this day still earn less than one dollar per day in annual income. Alan was with me when I made a commitment to God that if you give me 25 years of fruitful ministry as a pastor, I will try my level best to give the last 15 years of my active ministry on the mission field. I was there when Alan was so overwhelmed by what he saw and what he witnessed in Malawi, those struggling pastors whose churches cannot afford to care for them, not off of less than a dollar a day, today 97 cents a day. Alan was, I was there when Alan felt a certain urge inside him to be identified with the struggle to spread the gospel around the world. Alan made a commitment to return to Malawi as a teacher and a preacher. Today, there stands on the ground of the PIM Providence Industrial Mission in Malawi some of them whom are watching by YouTube today, if they can. Um, Macfa Chipolico being one of them. Alan Paul Weaver made a commitment that he was going to return to Malawi to teach. They built a house on the grounds of the Providence Industrial Mission to accommodate Alan Paul Weaver when he comes. The house until this day is still standing. It's called the Weaver House. Three bedrooms. Those of you who have been there with me and many of you in this room have been there with me. That house is still standing, although it is in terrible disrepair. I'm going there later this year. And in memory of Alan Paul Weaver, I'm going to lead the effort to refurbish the Alan Paul Weaver House. If there was one man, and I have many colleagues across the length and breadth of this nation, but none of them understood me and my passion for what I do like Alan Paul Weaver Jr. None of them understood me. And it was because Alan and I, together on that flight from John F. Kennedy, circling 16 nations on the continent of Africa, came to feel and see for ourselves the urgent need for the presence of Christ coming by way of the black church in America. I shall never forget how it affected him and how it affected me. So today, all over this country, there are people trying to log in to YouTube because they came to know Alan Paul Weaver and his love and his passion 
for the work of global missions. Recently, with coming of COVID, I started a, um, a 7 p.m. Zoom call with people, hundreds of people from all over the United States, from sea to shining sea, coming together on Sunday evenings to discuss various aspects of the faith. Now we're discussing the great hymns of the church now at seven o'clock. Alan Weaver was our facilitator. He knew how to take us there. I close with this. You all have my deepest and most profound sympathy. But when we got on the plane, coming back this way to the United States, 1987, we boarded the plane in uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And when we boarded the plane, the sun was shining as bright as it is today out there, or brighter. But while boarding that huge jet, a massive storm came up out of nowhere. Suddenly it came. The pleading rain you could hear on the fuselage. Hail the size of a golf ball beating on the plane. It was time for us to take off and the pilot came over the intercom system and said, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but we are at a standstill. We are on hold because the storm is so bad until we can't take off in this kind of weather. We are in a holding pattern, he says. And there we were on that hot plane. But about 45, 50 minutes later, the storm eased up. The wind stopped blowing. The rain ceased to fall. The hail was falling no more. And the pilot came over the intercom system a second time and said, ladies and gentlemen, we have just gotten orders from the control tower that it's safe now to take off. That massive jet sped down the runway with speeds approaching 300 miles an hour. Soon we were off the ground, flying, and the pilot comes over the, air, over the intercom system a third time and says, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to tell you now that we are flying above the storm. The other day when I talked to Alan Weaver, Alan told me he was going into the hospital for surgery. The storm began to rage. But then on Monday, Alan got orders from the control tower that it was safe to take off. And Alan today is flying, thank God, Above the storm. God bless you, baby. Good afternoon. Protocol has already been established, and I promise I won't be before you long. We are many today. We are here because we knew this great man. We are here because our heart is hurting. And so I'm representing the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity, and so I invite all of our ministers to stand, ministers and pastors. The Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity in love and memory of Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. 
Whereas Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. in 1980 was called to be the pastor of Bethesda Baptist Church in New Rochelle. Whereas Dr. Weaver instituted many programs to address the needs of the church and the community by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, leading the way for a family life center, and being a voice for the marginalized, the vo voiceless, the least, and the lowly. Whereas Dr. Weaver, a man of many degrees, the preacher, the pastor, the teacher, the dean, the board member, the scholar, the theological proclaimer of truth, the builder and the visionary. Whereas Dr. Weaver, the member of and the former president of the Baptist Ministers Conference from 1992 to 1994, he was also the chairperson and did other duties as assigned by the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity. Whereas the passing of our beloved brother in ministry is a loss to us, the officers and members, we are encouraged and consoled by Dr. Weaver's own words when he preached the Easter message on April 11, 2022, titled, It Pleased God. Dr. Weaver, our brother, truly pleased God. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace Mrs. Nettie Jean Love Weaver, Reverend Alan Paul Weaver III, Cyrus Charles Weaver, the daughter-in-law, uh, excuse me if I mess up your name, Ajanea Shipment Weaver, and grandson Noble Xavier Weaver, family and friends, and the Bethesda Baptist Church family. We pray that we will continue to have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives and be it further resolved that a period of official mourning will be observed for 30 days by the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity for our beloved brother, Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. This resolution is humbly submitted on this 30th day of June, 2023 by the officers and members of the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity and a copy given to the family. Reverend Dr. Geraldine L. Harris, the president, God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for allowing us to share this trying time with you. God bless you. Our moderator and our state president, Destiny has called us once again to a season of death and bereavement. We thank God for the life, the love, and the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. I'm going to ask that the United Missionary Baptist Association, if you're in the house, please stand. To the Weaver family, on behalf of our moderator, our second vice moderator, Dr. Robinson, our former moderators, and all the auxiliaries, the presidents, the entire Umber family, we want to say how much we love Dr. Weaver. We're going to miss Dr. Weaver. There's only one Dr. Weaver. He was indeed a dean of all deans. And so many of us stand on his shoulders. I'm sure the sons and the daughters of Bethesda. We love Dr. Weaver. He was our ordination council uh, leader. He was also our second vice moderator at one time. So I stand on his shoulders today. He also was the president of the Baptist Ministers Conference. He was indeed a king maker. Let me say about Dr. Weaver, the last time we shared with Dr. Weaver was in April of this year at the United Missionary Baptist Association, our second quarterly session. And when we walked in, when I walked in, I saw Dr. Weaver sitting there 
And I said, what are you doing here? Because we thought that he was not well. He said, I'm here to complete my assignment. Amen. Amen. So indeed, he has complete his assignment. So on behalf of our beloved moderator and the entire Umber family, we want to say we're going to miss our dean. We're going to miss his teaching. We're going to miss him sitting there and deep thought where you thought he was sleeping, he was not sleeping. He heard every word. And so Mrs. Weaver, thank you so much for sharing with us. Umber, you may sit down. I want to say this as I take my seat because so many people have said things and so many people will come and say. But let me say this, Ms. Weaver, I stand today as a, uh, also someone that has lost their husband. I stand today to bear witness, not of something that I heard, but I bear witness to losing a spouse. And there are going to be so many people that are gonna come and share calls, cards, flowers, everything. But after 20 years, this past Sunday made 20 years that Dr. Washington took his flight. And the only thing I remember from that day is what Isaiah says when he says, the grass withers and the flower fades, but it's the word of God that's going to last, that's going to stand forever. That's the only thing that brought me through 20 years after Dr. Washington taking his flight. God bless you, Mrs. Weaver. We do honor the Spirit of God that is resonating throughout this space and place on today to our presider and my moderator, Dr. Lowe, to our celebrant for the day, Dr. Howard, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I am deeply honored. Weaver family to be standing here because Dr. Weaver has chosen me at different times to be at special places for this the Weaver family. Dr. Jerry Young called me twice on yesterday, the president of our National Baptist Convention to have me express and share with you his deep condolence and sympathy because of the work Dr. Weaver did in our national work. Dr. Weaver has been on election commissions and on the board, he has served our national work. But he didn't just stop at our national work. Dr. Weaver served our state work. Our state constitution was written by Dr. Weaver three different times. Three different presidents saw the need to choose him to chair the committee on revisions to the Constitution because of the mind that he had. But then, as I stand here today, I began to, Sister Weaver, look at his name. Most preachers, when they get to a certain status, start using their initials. I think it makes them think they're... <laughs> you, you know, they use, they use their initials. But Dr. Alan Paul Weaver was always called Dr. Alan Paul Weaver. And that, that Dr. Dukes, um, made me have to look at his name. His name is Alan, which in Hebrew means God's love. His name is Paul, which in Hebrew means humble and small. His name is Weaver, which by definition is someone who weaves things together and makes them come together to carry other things. God's love is humble 
and it will carry your family through this moment. God bless. To Mrs. Weaver and to Reverend Alan Paul and to Cyrus Charles and the family, um, our hearts join with you in your sorrow. Uh, your sorrow is also ours. And so uh, we're here because we need to have to be in community um, to express that which is unexpressible and no better place than in community with those who loved him well. I think it is poetic that um, Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. decided to take flight on Juneteenth. He got his manumission papers and the Gospel of John, not taking the text, <laughs> says, he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I'm so grateful for uh, my brother, my elder brother, my mentor, the one that I could talk to about real things. Who, he was the salt of the earth. No pretense with, with that brother. Um, he oh, often spoke what was on his mind, and it was a good friendship that I enjoyed with him. He was one of the first persons um, to welcome me in my role as the regional minister of the American Baptist Churches, and he set up a luncheon, a reception, and I will never forget it. He didn't have to do that, um, because we know from the testimonies that have already been shared that he had many, many, many relationships and, and many affiliations, and he did not find it robbery to take from one in order to express to the other, and so in Christ, uh, we are one. And as an ecumenist, um, Alan Paul Weaver, Jr., preached that in his life. How blessed are we that he was who he was. During the pandemic, uh, we shared deeply we shared a, deeply about the continuing call to ministry, how difficult and challenging it was. It wasn't in any guidebook what it was that we were to, were to do during those years. But I hope that you notice that God prepared Pastor Weaver in advance. He was into technology, and so when the time came, more than many, he was ready. He invited me to preach one, that 2020 Palm Sunday, and I was surprised and delighted that he was the technician. He was the one that operated the Zoom. He knew what to do on a grassroots level, as well as one who had a larger vision of what God is doing amongst us. The table was one place that um, Dr. Weaver liked to gather. He would often say, choose your favorite restaurant. We're going to go there, and we're going to enjoy some food and just talk. I think that he probably said the same thing to many of you. This great man was a boabab tree, the tree of life that stands tall and keeps water in its trunk during dry seasons. It has healing properties. And its trunk, trunk is used by some to construct homes. And so we honor this Boabab named Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr., who has now laid down. He stood tall, he hydrated many, and he fed the souls of all of us. And so on behalf of the American Baptist Churches of Metropolitan New York, its president, the Reverend Timothy Pantoja, and its members, I would invite any who were a part of the American Baptist Churches, and you know who you are, to stand with me. Our 180 sister churches 
and we stand with the other constellation of Baptists in many other places to honor him with these words, whereas the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. served God and community as pastor of the Bethesda Baptist Church for 40 years, and whereas Dr. Weaver followed his heart and lived into being a pastor, often turning down roles of national and international prestige in order to tend to a people called Bethesda to encourage deep discipleship and faithfulness in them, whereas the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver called out and raised sons and daughters in ministry and helped them prepare to serve God well in pulpits, pastorates, and on the mission field to proclaim the redeeming love of God and the transforming reality of faith in Jesus Christ. And whereas Dr. Weaver lived out the spiritual gifts of encouragement, hospitality, honoring, bending over backward to help assure that all were welcome in the realm of God. Whereas the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver saw ministry and mission beyond the four walls of his church, the New Rochelle community, and encouraged mission to the wider church in places near and far, to persons who were affected by storms and ravaged in the US, Caribbean, Haiti, parts of Africa, and throughout the world. Whereas Dr. Weaver loved his people deeply and served them tenaciously, preaching in season and out of season to our chagrin sometimes with his whole heart, not ever wanting to let God down or let us go. We commend our dear brother to the care and keeping of our creator father who is now in, who is now in the everlasting realm, the place where Jesus went to prepare for us. Alan Paul Weaver Jr., now take your place among those who have gone on before, where one day we also hope to be. You have earnestly believed and served God well and now are welcomed home. Hear the words of Jesus that was spoken, that is spoken to the most faithful. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You may have your seat. Oh, we bless the Lord. I, I know what you're saying. He didn't truncate, he didn't stand up for anybody. There are a few of them there that shared, I'm just scared of. <laughs> so I just had to treat everybody equally. So I just held my place. Amen. To the disciples, servant leadership of the Bethesda Baptist Church. You have given me the honor and the privilege to share in this capacity today. And we have called upon those near and far in various settings, organizations, to sow into your spirit of consolation and comfort today. Thank you so very much. But as you will note now, as we continue in the order of service, it's all about Bethesda. They have a perspective. They have a foundation, a base, to which most of us don't know. We are honored to share with you in reflecting upon your pastor, the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. And with that, the youth choir, present and I guess former members of Bethesda are going to come and share a musical selection, How Excellent. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm asking all reunion angelic voices and purpose members to come forward at this time. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Angelic voices and purpose members. Thank you.
bless the Lord today. Hallelujah. I know that all of you have been focused on, on the pulpit area, but are you aware that the balcony is filled to capacity? Did anybody turn around and look up there? Hallelujah. Bless the balcony. As a younger past preacher, you know, 30, 40 years ago, I always wanted to be the kind of preacher that would make it to satellite TV. I did. I, that was an aspiration of mine. Didn't do it. But today I am on YouTube. God is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bethesda Church comes now with acknowledgments of the church's resolutions and remarks. The clerk of Bethesda, Sister Malik Eiffel, will come. And then the sons and daughters, those whom Dr. Weaver's ministry impacted in such a way that they too now follow in his ministerial path. The servant leadership of the church comes, the deacons, the deaconess, and the trustee board of Bethesda will come in their respective order. Reverend Tamara Kabimba, Reverend Dr. Noel Hutchison, Deacon Bridget McLeod Williams, Deaconess Katrina Weather, and Trustee Pamela Wheeler. They come now. Good afternoon. The family of Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. has graciously received a host of resolutions and notices of condolences from ministries within Bethesda Baptist Church, as well as from various churches and organizations. We are not able to read all of them at this time. However, the family will be given all resolutions and they will acknowledge each of them at a later date. We would like, however, to acknowledge receipt of the following. A resolution from Second Baptist Church in Munford, New York. Reverend Reuben Lowry is pastor. Reverend Weaver was the 18th minister serving there from 1971 to 1973. Jones High School, class of 1965, Pastor Weaver's high school class, Meroy Pledge, Charles Hudson, President. We have some proclamations here from the Office of the Mayor, City of New Rochelle, which proclaims that Sunday, July 2nd, 2023, as Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Day. We also have a proclamation from the Westchester County Board of Legislators resolving that when the Westchester County Board of Legislators adjourns the meeting on July 10th, they will do so in honor and memory of Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. <laughs> Additionally, we have a proclamation here from Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins recognizing the contributions of Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. in memoriam, do proclaim this day, June 30th, 2023, as a day of reflection and mourning in memory of the life of Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. <laughs> and 
At this time, would all the covenant disciples of Bethesda Baptist Church please stand. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Matthew 25, 23. The Almighty God, the creator of all things, the giver of life, has summoned Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver from labor to reward. It is never easy to say goodbye but we find comfort in knowing that Pastor Weaver is safely resting in the arms of our Lord where no pain, sorrow, or sickness exists. Reverend Weaver's life is a living testimony which gives credence to what we're all capable of when we surrender our lives to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and allow him to use us as a vessel to transform the lives of others so that they too may know the glory of the Lord. Reverend Weaver was committed to the building up of God's kingdom as exhibited by his many works and deeds. He will be remembered as one who was a proven leader and faithful laborer, leaving an indelible imprint on many lives and ministries, not only in New Rochelle, but throughout the New York region, the United States and abroad. He was a phenomenal gift to the body of Christ called Bethesda Baptist Church of New Rochelle. Being the longest pastor Bethesda had, Pastor Weaver was a gospel preacher per excellence and an anointed vessel of the Lord. He birthed through his legacy many pastors and was a spiritual father to many. Pastor Weaver shared the gospel with all he met throughout the breadth and depth of this country with intelligence, humor, wisdom, and love. He offered hope through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There are many adjectives that we could use to describe Reverend Weaver. These include, but not limited to, humble, supportive, a gospel giant, encourager, a teacher of the faith, a mentor, and a spiritual father. The covenant disciples of Bethesda Baptist Church will always remember him as friend, prayer warrior, teacher, leader, beloved pastor, and one blessed and highly favored by our Lord and Jesus Christ. To Pastor Weaver's devoted wife, First Lady, First Lady Deacon Nettie Jean Weaver, loving children, co-pastor Reverend Alan Paul Weaver III, and brother Cyrus Charles Weaver, daughter-in-law Lady Ejaniah Weaver, grandson Noble Weaver, and son-in-law Ryan Birch, as well as other bereaved family and friends. May the God of all grace grant you comfort, peace, and solace at this time of bereavement. Know that beyond our understanding, he doeth all things well. On this occasion, we offer our love and genuine sympathy as we humbly bow in submission to the Heavenly Father's perfect will. The entire Bethesda Baptist Church family availed themselves to you during this bereavement period. Whereas, we the covenant disciples of the Bethesda Baptist Church of New Rochelle deem it an honor and our duty to record the high esteem, noble character, excellent qualities, and compassionate nature of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Ellen Paul Weaver, Jr whereas Pastor Weaver will be greatly missed by all who knew and loved him. And though the Bethesda Baptist Church of New Rochelle mourns the loss of our beloved pastor, we celebrate his life of dedicated and committed servitude above all to the Lord. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, Revelations 21.4. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy placed in our church records 
done by the order of the Covenant Disciples of the Bethesda Baptist Church of New Rochelle on this the 30th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2023. Reverend Ella Reverend Paul Weaver III, co-pastor, Deacon Bridget McLeod Williams, chairperson, Deacon Ministry, Deaconess Katrina Weather, chairperson, Deaconess Ministry, Trustee Pamela Streeter Wheeler, chairperson, Trustee Ministry, Deaconess Keisha Lee, assistant church clerk, and Sister Malik Eiffel, church clerk. We will miss you, Pastor, and we love you so much. As the stand at this time. May the daughters of Bethesda stand at this time. We all know it takes courage to pastor. We know in ministry, when God speaks, it does not always go according to tradition. It takes an anointing to say, I will do what God called me to do, whether people agree with it or not. Our pastor understood that when scripture said that God would pour his spirit upon all flesh, it did not say only certain kind of flesh, it said all flesh. And when it was not common, our pastor knew that God was saying, I've called not only sons, but I've called daughters. Pastor stood firm and took the hits for it. But he stood behind us. When he nurtured us, he did not say, I'm only going to nurture a certain part of of the clergy a certain way and another. No, he held us with the same standard of excellence as everyone else. And at the same time, he knew without a shadow of a doubt the obstacles that we were going to face. And when many of us are questioned, well, how do we deal with the obstacles? We know him as Doc. Doc would say, just do what God calls for you to do what he's equipped you to do and what he's anointed you to do. He did not negate the fact that sometimes God calls people to, to, to minister in a different way than tradition, but he nurtured us, nurtured us and said, do what God has called you to do. He backed us up. He got on our case, but we knew that it was in love. We, as the daughters of Bethesda, say thank you, Pastor, for having the courage to do what thus saith the Lord. And because our pastor was in passionate love with his God, you can see now, or we see now, we've been the recipients of the blessing of the Lord and the courage to go forth. Thank you, Pastor. Enjoy the ultimate retirement. God bless you.
Good afternoon. I hadn't planned on saying this. In these moments, I tend to keep to myself. But spirit dealt with me in a way it hadn't since I did my mother's eulogy 15 years ago. As the youth choir was singing and I was sitting over there and now coming up the steps, I could hear in my spirit Dr. Weaver in the portals of glory standing next to my mother and they pointing, there he is. <laughs> to the Weaver family, y'all know I love you. Bethesda, y'all know I love you. And to all the collegium of preachers, many of whom I know personally, God bless you. Will all the sons of Bethesda please stand? If you are a son of the house, stand up. Amen. You may be seated. In case you don't know, I am Dr. Noel George Llewellyn Hutchinson, Jr. Yeah, I know, I heard somebody say, ooh, I know I already took up my two minutes just saying my name. <laughs> In order for you to fully understand the impact that Dr. Weaver had on his sons and daughters in ministry, you have to know our story. Some came out of the soil of Bethesda from the cradle row, and others came from various places and various stages pre-ordination. I'm gonna give you a very brief synopsis of mine. I'm the only child of Jamaican immigrants who made it to the Bronx in 1957. And I arrived at Bronx Lebanon Hospital in 1961. And around the time I graduated from Brandeis University in 1982, my parents, now in their late 60s, decided to leave where we lived in the Northeast Bronx. And for those of you to give you a point of reference, we lived behind the streets that was at Gun Hill Coast Lane. You know, the bowling alley on Gun Hill Road. I know most of y'all know where that is. Right across the street from the McDonald's. And I can tell by how some of y'all look, you've been to the McDonald's quite often. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And I was sitting next to you. So we moved from there to 21 The Boulevard here in New Rochelle, which was a house in need of great rehab. I remember one week, we dug out the weeds in the rock garden next to that long driveway. My father, my mother, and I, it was raining. We were digging out seven-foot weeds. That's just an example of the hard work that we were doing. I left a possible job off in Boston because I knew my parents were going to need me, so I came home and moved in with them. And so ever since we left the South Bronx, we commuted back to an Episcopal church on 177th Street in Morris Avenue. I got saved at, nine, at 18 years old, and I knew it was time to stop this commute. And so I asked the Lord to lead me to a church in the neighborhood where I could walk and where I could learn more about the Lord. I had a friend of mine that was a member of this church where we are, Shiloh. She said, you need to come here. We both went to Brandeis. She graduated in 84, I graduated in 82. And so I made my way up here. I attended this church for almost a year and a half. I couldn't walk the aisle. I've never really connected to anybody, really, never really connected to the pastor. And so I gave you the reference of where I was living. To have you understand, over you and New Rochelle heard it right away. I took a straight walk, straight down the boulevard to the circle, to Lincoln Avenue, up the hill, here. And one day I said, I must be a fool. I'm walking up that hill. <laughs> and 
and I keep passing this church right across the, from the park, I'm going to make this right turn as I walk up the street and go into Bethesda Baptist Church. I went into church, the ushers were friendly. I went into church, the members were friendly. I went into church, the first lady was friendly. I went into church, the pastor preached and he was friendly. And then they said, we're so glad you came. Come back next Sunday. Next Sunday, I came back, and they were even nicer than they were the week before. <laughs> and then Dr. Weaver preached, and the spirit fell heavy in the house. And the next Sunday, my feet started walking up the aisle. And I joined Bethesda. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point. I had no real idea of the awesome blessing the Lord gave me in the church and a pastor, but I found out right away. Dr. Weaver was the consummate teacher and preacher. Bible study and prayer meeting was always packed. Now, I know in some of our churches, you know, it's like kibbles and bits, but it wasn't like that at Bethesda. <laughs> Folk was trying to get to Bible study early. And they asked all kinds of questions, even things that weren't part of the subject matter. And I saw Dr. Weaver calmly answer each and every one. And I saw how he was with people, and he loved everybody, even those who obviously didn't love him. Hello, somebody. And so sometime around the end of 1994, the Lord started messing with me, started stirring my nest and showing me my call to ministry. And I went to pastor, and, and, and some of y'all know, he said, if you could do anything else, do that. And left it right there. I said, Dad, you have no other advice. <laughs> but the Lord kept messing with me, and some weeks later as I sat in church, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Deacon is Barbara Dillard. Y'all remember her. She was reading Romans 1.15. I heard the Lord say, I want you to preach. Go. And I declared it that morning after the sermon. Matter of fact, I got up. I can't remember the deacon's name. One of the deacons whispered in my ear and said, I'm going to recommend you to the deacon board. I said, no, don't do that. He looked like he was getting ready to lay hands on me right then. Until... The church heard about my call. And Bethesda loved me. And I just want to say thank you, Bethesda. And so I declared what Dr. We really already knew, that I was called to preach. And so then I went through Dr. Weaver's preacher's finishing school. And I was the first student. So you already know I got beat up the worst, don't you? I, I'm going to give you the highlights because there's a lot to it. He, he said, study all the time. Be ready all the time. Be faithful all the time. He embodied all of those things all the time. And with all of his gifts, he was humble, he was steady, and everybody worth knowing knew him. I became part of the pastoral staff at the Concord Church. Y'all know that big edifice in Brooklyn, that big preaching house, and it happened because of the late Richard C. Gay and Dr. Weaver. All right. And Dr. Weaver knew, of course, Richard Gay, Gardner Taylor, and Gary Simpson. And all I've tried to do in what I've done in ministry is do what Dr. Weaver emulated and make full proof of my ministry. Ah. Been on television, Dr. Weaver been on radio, Dr. Weaver. Now I'm the executive missions director for the Progressive National Baptist Convention, Dr. Weaver. All I did was try to emulate him and God opened doors. But now, I'm not gonna close like Baptist preachers do three times, but I am getting ready to take my seat. But before I do that, before I do that, I have to tell you this story and if you see the sons and daughters react, that's because they've been through the same thing. But remember, he did it to me first. 
I gotta tell you, Dr. Weaver's number one, number one rule for ordination. You must go to school. And since I'm his oldest son out of Bethesda, I can tell you that he spoke to me in up close Weaver language. He knew how to speak a matter of fact without raising his voice and you knew he wasn't playing. So he called me in his office and for 10 minutes, he told me that in order to ordain me, I had to go to school. You wanna know what I told pastor? No. Yeah, I know, I was bold. I told him no. See, I had a flashback. I graduated from Brandeis with a thank you Lordy degree. <laughs> and so I wasn't trying to do that again. And then all Doc said was, okay. Now, sons and daughters, y'all know what that okay means, right? He means I've already spoken, but we also had a praying pastor. So he didn't say anything, but he went into his prayer closet. So here's what happened. Because I did tell you I was Dr. Hutchinson. Did I not say that? And it's earned, did I? You know. So check out what happened. I was playing and singing for a group out of Brooklyn. And we had, this about a month later, we had an, uh, an engagement in Philly. I'm just about old. And the leader got up to preach. And, and the leader group got up to preach during the engagement and said, the Lord hasn't given me anything to preach. And they stood behind the pulpit for two minutes without saying a word. I said to myself, this Negro didn't talk to the Lord for the five months? We knew about this engagement? And at the end of two minutes, he said, the Lord now give me something to preach. And then he read one text and preached from another. And the sermon was so disjointed that when he started his hoop, he had to lean, look over there and tell the organist to start playing. And while I was watching this craziness, I heard the Lord say audibly to me, you will be just like him if you don't go to school. And I ran to seminary. Y'all don't hear me today. And oh, let me add this in. I graduated cum laude. So we had a pastor that could walk with kings and had the common touch. We had a pastor that embraced technology and knew it well. Some of your old school um, Bethesda members know that Gestetna machine. Y'all remember that? We had programs that looked like they came off professional presses, and we were about 20 to 30 years ahead of any church around here. Everybody else had those hand stencil stuff. Our stuff looked professional all the time. Proper grammar, impressive, even now. He did that. You got, we're in an era now where Preachers have armor bearers. You can't even shake their hand. They got somebody carrying their Bible. And when they stand by in the sacred desk and open the Bible, they have nothing to say. But he was humble. He knew who he was. And he wasn't bothered about what you think, but he made full proof of his ministry and he equipped us to do the same. So, Dr. Weaver, thank you for all that you poured into us. Thank you, Dr. Weaver, for all you meant to us. Thank you, Dr. Weaver, for getting on us. And I could see on that Juneteenth morning, I could see the Lord saying, y'all get ready. I could see the Lord saying, somebody of significance is coming into heaven. And when the Lord got ready to say, well, the angels started shouting. And when he got to the done, Dr. Weaver walked in glory. And Doc, one day, in that great getting up morning, I'll see you there.
afternoon. First, my name is Bridget McLeod Williams, Deacon Bridget McLeod Williams, and I am the chair of the Deacon's Ministry at Bethesda Baptist Church. Um, will all of the deacons from, of Bethesda Baptist Church please stand? First, let me say giving honor to God, who is the head of all of our lives. Um, on behalf of the Diaconate Ministry of Bethesda Baptist Church, I extend our deepest sympathies to Deacon Nettie Jean Weaver, co-pastor Alan Paul Weaver III, and Cyrus Charles Weaver, and the entire family. I tell you, no words can adequately express our deep love, appreciation, and admiration for our great shepherd and leader of the flock at Bethesda, the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. It has been our privilege to serve as deacons at the Bethesda Baptist Church under his leadership. He served the Covenant Disciples of Bethesda for 43 years through faithfully teaching and preaching from the depth of his soul the importance of, an, of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I can hear him, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. And it was pastor's desire that we as deacons walk in our calling as servant leaders. He trained us, he catechized us, he equipped us so that we could adequately, so that we could be adequately prepared for all the challenges, the blessings, all facets of leadership so that through our service we could edify the body of Christ at Bethesda Baptist Church and fulfill our mission, which is to glorify God by reaching, teaching, and motivating people to become genuine disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, I could go on and on, but I won't, about how Pastor poured into us, but I will just say, to Deacon Nettie, co-pastor, Reverend Allen, Cyrus, and the family, that we avail ourselves to you. We are here to support you. We are praying for you. As you know, we have Sunday evening Deacon's Prayer Time every Sunday. We will continue to lift you up in our prayers, individually and collectively. We so loved our pastor. We learned so much from him. He was always there helping us through our leadership challenges as well as our own personal challenges, our own personal situations. So today our hearts are heavy, but we know that it's not the end of the story. We know that he is with the Lord and we will see him again in that great getting up morning. And so we pray that God would comfort you and keep you and that is our prayer, and the, you may be seated. <laughs> um, and while, while I'm here, I just, I know that there will be a lot of thank yous that happen later on, but while I'm here, um, yesterday at the conclusion of our public viewing, I was remiss in that I did not thank the ushers and the nurses of, that came out from UMBA to support us they served us through that period. And I just wanted, and the, and the marshals, the marshals as well. And so I just wanted to publicly say thank you. We appreciated all that you did for us. God bless you.
brothers and sisters in Christ. Will the deaconess ministry of Bethesda Baptist Church please stand? We, the deaconess ministry of Bethesda Baptist Church of New Rochelle, pay our respect to Pastor Reverend Dr. Allen Paul Weaver, Jr. Our earthly time is limited. We praise God for the battle you fought on behalf of Reverend Dr. Allen Paul Weaver. Pastor Weaver's earthly body is still, and we recognize that he has risen body, his risen body will live forever. The Deaconess Ministry thanks Pastor Weaver for your life and your legacy. We will miss you tremendously. Pastor Weaver, we want to thank you for your kindness and your encouragement. From the study of the scriptures to the depth studying of the world, Pastor Weaver was never too busy to have a conversation with his deaconesses. From the new chairs for a new podium or just something to beautify the sanctuary, Pastor Weaver would always say, my deaconesses has it. Pastor Weaver would always push us that we may study ourselves to be wonderful leaders of the church. We, the deaconesses of Bethesda Baptist Church, find it an honor and a privilege to have Pastor Weaver as our shepherd, the one to lead us, to teach us, and care for us as well as our family. We feel very honored and special because Pastor Weaver picked each and every one of us person. <clears throat> Pastor often encouraged us to stay with God. So as we continue to look to Christ and the cross, we will discover that weeping is necessary, but also joy comes in the morning. To the Weaver family, First Lady Weaver, Deaconess Deacon Weaver, Alan, Cyrus, and the entire Weaver family, our most tenderest sympathy and encouragement is to you. May you rest in the care of knowing that the strength of the Lord is with you. Let the sweet memories of the times love shared comfort you. The deaconess minister of Bethesda Baptist Church grieves with you during this bereavement period and avail ourselves to you. We don't have to worry about where past the years because we know what he is. So on behalf of the Deaconess Ministry, know that we love you and we're here for you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Pam Wheeler. I'm the chair of the trustee ministry. And to the Weaver family, Deacon Weaver, Reverend Allen, Cyrus, uh, please know that the trustee board is here for you. Whatever you need, um, we will make it happen. And to everyone who's here, thank you for coming. Um, I know that Reverend Weaver would enjoy it, even though he'd act like he wasn't too, but he would really enjoy it. Um, I was thinking about Reverend Weaver, and I thought about my daughter, who's now 16 years old. And when she was in first grade, she, I, and Deacon Helena, who's a school teacher, I think first grade is when the time when they start getting words, right? And you not, those vocabulary words. And so you, what you have to do is you have to write a sentence to indicate to the teacher that you know what the word means, right? So my daughter's word was witness. So her sentence was, whenever my pastor finishes preaching, he says, can I get a witness? <laughs> And she had exclamation points <laughs> after it. So I normally wouldn't allow her to submit that, but I wrote a letter to the teacher and I said, apparently this means something to her. It doesn't really give you an indication that she knows what witness means, but I didn't want to tell her that she couldn't use that. So when I told Reverend Weaver the story, he said, well, at least I know somebody's listening. <laughs> 
So, Reverend Weaver, Pastor, I just want you to know that the next time, even though you're not here physically, the next time I make a decision based strictly on facts, bottom line, where the money coming from, I'm going to hear you say, now, Pam, we can't do that. We don't want the people to turn away from the church. We can't do that. And the next time we try to come up with some superfluous theme, erudite statement, and we trying to figure out what we should say, I'm going to hear him say, just tell them Jesus and him crucified. <laughs> and the next time, whether I'm home by myself, whether we're in a group, whether we're having a good day, or whether we're having a bad day, I'm just going to say, ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Somebody ought to say yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the trustees of the Bethesda Baptist Church to stand right now. And I want you to say this with me. Even though he, I hope he knows this, but pastor, hello? Let's do this again. Pastor, we were listening. As we've all been blessed and encouraged by those who have shared, let's receive Reverend Alan Paul Weaver III from the family. Praise the, Lord. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> On behalf of uh, my mother and my brother and uh, all of our family, that, that are present uh, here, we just first want to say thank you to everyone that's in this sanctuary, everyone that's on YouTube, everyone in the overflow, like wherever you are, we want to say thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come to pay respects uh, to my father and to, to give honor to whom honor is do we, we say thank you. We say thank you to everyone that's called, that's text, that's email, that's stopped by, that's made food, that brought water, whatever you did. Those who wanted to be on guard, make sure mama's okay, like everything. We want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it is through, uh, people have asked, how have you been able to make it? And we can feel God's uh, Holy Spirit empowering us, and we know that that's in response to the prayers of his people. Everyone that's here, those uh, who, again, virtually, people praying who we don't even know across the country, and so we know that God is holding us and God is holding you by his Spirit. And so, once again, we say, we say thank you. Now, having, having said that, I just wanted to uh, say, say a couple of things. My father shared with me, uh, he had two great loves that, that I inherited uh, from him. One, of course, was the love of God, right? Loving Jesus, having a relationship with Jesus. The next one was love of science fiction, specifically Star Trek. And so on, I said, I got, I got a hand raised. I see you back there. And on, the, uh, on Father's Day, 
The day before my dad went home to be with the Lord, I, after service, uh, we were at the hospital with him. And uh, before I left the hospital, we both gave each other uh, the, the Vulcan salute, you know, the live long and prosper and peace and long life. And, and so that, that's something that, that, uh, that, that we, we always share. Now, having, having said that, they're, they're, even though we're all here to pay our respects, some of you may um, be wondering, is, is heaven really real? Is God really real? Is Jesus really the Lord and Savior of, of humanity? And um, is, is it just mythology or, or, or something like that? Is it real? You may be, be wondering that. And, you know, my dad preached for 43 years here in New Rochelle, letting us know that Jesus is real, that heaven is real, that hell is real, uh, that God is real, that, that, that Jesus is the only way to the, the Father. And, and if you have a question about whether or not uh, heaven is real and Jesus is real and whether or not you should give your, your life to him, I just want to share a, a, a story with you. When I got to college, my first semester, uh, I stopped going to church. As a preacher's kid, right, I finally had an opportunity <laughs> to do me. And so I stopped going to church. Now the Lord let me get away with that for one semester. And by the end of the, end of the semester, he worked out some things and some situations to let me know, okay, you need to get your behind back in church and you need to pick that Bible up that you got sitting collecting dust and you need to reestablish a relationship with me. Second semester, Valentine's night, I was at a Valentine's ball, and when we came out of the ball, there was a uh, drive-by shooting just off campus. And one of my really good friends who I had met first semester, his name was Henry, he got killed in the drive-by shooting. And when we found out the news, I, I, there was nothing we could do. And I ran to my dorm room, it's nighttime, I had the lights off, and I'm crying, and I'm angry, and you know, I wanna find who did it, like I'm gonna do something about it, right? <laughs> but in my moment of pain, I'm crying out, God, why? The Holy Spirit descends into the room, and this peace comes over me, and immediately I hear the voice of God speak to me just like I'm talking to you, and he said, Henry is with me. My response to him was like, Lord, what do you mean Henry's with you? Last time I knew, Henry was not saved. Now, a couple months before, the Lord had told me, share the gospel with Henry, but I was too afraid. I felt that, that he would get offended, and so I didn't. And so now the Lord is saying, Henry is with me. And I said, Lord, the last I knew, he wasn't saved. And he said it one more time, Henry is with me this peace, and I said, okay, that's what you say, and the Holy Spirit lifted from the room. I found out a couple days later that the funeral was gonna be about 60 miles away. As a freshman, we weren't allowed to have cars. I said, Lord, I wanna to go to the funeral, but I don't have a way to get there. The day before his funeral, the night before, as I'm coming out of the dorm, a senior is walking in and she says, I'm going to Henry's funeral tomorrow, but I don't want to drive by myself. And I said, well, I want to go, but I don't have a way to get there. So we both went together. We got to the church about as big as this. We were in the last row in the, in the balcony and the dean was doing the eulogy. He was also a minister. And as he did it, he said that two weeks before Henry was killed, the dean had called Henry to his office and had shared the gospel with him, and Henry had given his life to Jesus. At that moment, God opened my eyes, and in all of the aisles and down on the front, I saw angels standing everywhere. See, God confirms his word. Is heaven real? Yes, it is. How do we know? Because the Bible says so. Is Jesus Lord? Yes, he is. How do we know? Because the Bible says so. And God will back up his word. So if you're concerned about whether or not it's true, 
It's true, not just because I told you this story that is real, that actually happened, but because the Bible says so. And so here we are today, celebrating a man who has given his life to Jesus and has preached in our presence for over 50 years. And I know that 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 he's up with, in glory with Jesus. And I know that 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 if we follow Jesus all the way through with our last breath, then we will enter glory and we will see Jesus, our Lord and Savior, face to face. And when we are done glorifying him, Jesus will say, okay, turn around and look behind you. And we will see Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. So family, church family, community, God bless you. And know that the one thing that matters most beyond everything else is where you and I will spend eternity. And God loves each and every one of us so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, so that anyone who believes in him and places their faith in him does not have to perish in hell, but can live forever with him in his eternal kingdom. Thank you. And I didn't mean to preach. But God bless you. <laughs> Minister Christopher Tuck comes now and shares the poem Crossing the Bar followed by the reading of the obituary as ministered and shared by uh, Reverend Donna Ousu Ansa, pastor-elect of the First Baptist Church of Englewood. Amen. And oh, to be lifted to the heavenlies as Sister Joy Everson of Bethesda comes and sings. May the work I've done speak for me. Good afternoon, church. If you've ever been to a funeral, or, or I should say a homegoing celebration that pastor presided before he, before the eulogy happened, there were some poems that happened. And I'm humbled and honored, and I want to thank co-pastor for this opportunity to read Crossing the Bar. Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Here now but a glimpse of the life of the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. was born on November 30th, 1947 to Alan Weaver, Sr. and Julia Owens Weaver in Orlando, Florida. He was the youngest of 11 children. He was an intelligent and precocious child who loved to read and draw. 
Allen and his family were active members of Bethel Baptist Church where he was asked to preach on youth Sundays. Even as a boy, he evidenced biblical knowledge, oratorical skills, and a very spirited delivery. Allen enrolled at Jones High School in Orlando. He could have played sports, but he chose intellectual pursuits instead. One such pursuit was aeronautical engineering, which was piqued by his exposure to the country's space program via NASA, headed by NASA. He seriously considered pursuing this field of study. However, his visions of reaching the stars via spacecraft was recalibrated toward a more heavenly view. This new vision would transport him upwards by the word of God through Jesus Christ. In the fall of 1965, Allen attended Florida Memorial College, now University in Miami. He immersed himself in his studies, graduating cum laude in 1969 with a Bachelor of Science degree in religious education. That same year, he was also ordained a minister of the gospel. After college, Reverend Weaver continued his quest for learning by enrolling at Golden Gate Theological Seminary in Mill Valley, California. He later transferred to Colgate Rochester Divinity School in Rochester, New York, graduating with a Master's of Divinity degree with a concentration in Christian ethics in 1972. While at Colgate, Reverend Weaver met Reverend Charles Austin Thurman, a fellow seminarian. The two became instant friends. Reverend Thurman had recently married Maddie Lee Love of Meridian, Mississippi. Soon they introduced Alan to Maddie's younger sister, Nettie Jean, and the rest is history. Reverend Weaver accepted an interim pastorate at the Second Baptist Church of Mumford, New York in 1971. Then on June 10th, 1972, Alan and Nettie were married in Meridian, Mississippi. In that same year, Alan became the senior pastor of Second Baptist Church in Mumford, New York. In 1973, Reverend Weaver and his bride accepted to call to serve Greater Union First Baptist Church in D-Land, Florida. That next year, baby Alan Paul Weaver III was born. In 1975, the Weavers moved their family to Atlanta where he accepted a position with the American Baptist Churches of the South as Minister of Stewardship and Support. The position covered a 16-state region with over 165 churches. While in Atlanta, the Weavers joined Mount Zion Second Baptist Church and Reverend Weaver continued to preach the gospel. In 1977, Reverend Weaver returned to Florida to become the pastor of Mount Bethel Institutional Baptist Church in Daytona Beach. There, Pastor Weaver's passion for preaching and teaching led to an adjunct professor position at Bethune-Cookman College, now university. For the next three years, the family flourished in the community. In 1980, Reverend Weaver became the pastor of the historic Bethesda Baptist Church of New Rochelle, New York. In moving from the south to the north, his family found a pleasant community environment that would be their home for the next 43 years. While here, their second son, Cyrus Charles Weaver, was born in 1985. Reverend Weaver received his Doctorate of Ministry degree in 1994 from United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio, where he was an Edward L. Wheeler Fellow. His doctoral thesis, which was completed in 1994, focused on the intersection between black economics and the black church. Reverend Weaver was a theologian and activist. He was affiliated with American Baptist Churches USA and National Baptist Convention USA. Deeply committed to foreign missions, Reverend Weaver was a member of the 1987 National Baptist Convention preaching team, which proclaimed the gospel in over nine African countries. In 1988, he was the guest preacher at the National Baptist Convention of Malawi, Africa. On the national scene, Dr. Weaver served as campaign manager for two denominational campaigns. From 1992 to 1994, he served as the president of the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity. 
He also served as a dean of the United Missionary Baptist Association as well as director of the Associate Ministers Division. Dr. Weaver is a past board member of the Interreligious Council of New Rochelle, past president of the Ministerial Alliance of New Rochelle, and past member of the board of directors of the New Rochelle YMCA. He served on the City of New Rochelle Commission on Charter Revision. He also served a two-year two term as president of the New Rochelle branch of the NAACP. In 2006, Dr. Weaver was inducted as a fellow into the Martin Luther King Jr. Hall of Preachers at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. He was also invited to Oxford, England to serve on the prestigious Oxford Round Table. In 2008, he was elected as a delegate from New Rochelle to the Democratic National Convention in Denver, Colorado. He was proud to cast his vote for Senator Obama to become the Democratic nominee for the office of President of the United States of America. <laughs> Pastor Weaver taught and lectured nationally and abroad over his many years of ministry. While at Bethesda, Dr. Weaver established a school of prophets and mentored many ministers, male and female, who went on to pastor their own churches or lead their own ministries. He served as an instructor at New York Theological Seminary in New York City and at the Alliance Theological Seminary in Nyack, New York. He wrote a multiplicity, somebody say multiplicity. He wrote a multiplicity of articles and created numerous ministry resource materials which have helped thousands of Christians to deepen their relationship with Christ and impact their communities. Dozens of preachers consider themselves Dr. Weaver's sons and daughters in ministry. During Reverend Weaver's leadership, there were many firsts regarding women. Women were licensed into the preaching ministry and ordained at Bethesda. He ordained the church's first female deacons and the first female chairperson of the deacon board. He also invited select women to become mothers of the church. Dr. Weaver was a larger than life, passionate preacher of the gospel and an excellent biblical scholar. He loved his congregation and was a true shepherd for 43 years, guiding each covenant disciple towards biblical literacy, a genuine relationship with God and uplifting one another through fellowship. During his many years at Bethesda, Reverend Weaver led several building campaigns to purchase property on the corner of Brook Street and Lincoln Avenue, as well as build the Dr. C. M. Long Senior Family Life Center. Always with an eye on others, Reverend Weaver worked with his, his and other congregations to help meet community needs. For the last eight years of his pastorate, Dr. Weaver worked with his son, Reverend Alan Paul Weaver III, who presently serves as the co-pastor of Bethesda. Dr. Weaver's passing was not only a great shock to his congregation and wider community, but it has also created a great void for his devoted family. He will be remembered as a man who loved Jesus and the church, made time for his family, enjoyed a good laugh, traveled broadly, understood computers, and gave the Vulcan salute to fellow Star Trek fans. Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. was preceded in death by his parents, his mother, Rhett Weaver, Marion Weaver, excuse me, his, uh, his brothers, Rhett Weaver, Marion Weaver, George Weaver, Lloyd Weaver, William Weaver, and Parker Bronson, his sisters, Angela Weaver Carthen, Louise Weaver, and Bertha Lee Bronson, and a lifelong brother in Christ, Reverend Dr. Charles Austin Thurman, and his infant son, Charles Austin Thurman II. He leaves to cherish his memory, his wife of 51 years, Nettie Jean Weaver, sons Alan Paul Weaver III, Ejaniah Shipman Weaver of Larchmont, New York, and Cyrus Charles Weaver, Ryan Birch of Boston, Massachusetts. One grandson, Noble Xavier Weaver, one sister, Elise Weaver McFadden, McFadder of Gainesville, Florida. Sisters-in-law, Maddie Thurman, Charles, deceased, of Rochester, New York. Avenue Love Stanley, William J. Stanley of Atlanta, Georgia. 
and Riola Daniels, Philip Daniels of Meridian, Mississippi, nieces Tanya Thurman and Kimberly Thurman Rivera, Jose Rivera, great niece Kennedy Charlize Thurman Rivera, great nephews Jacob Charles Thurman Rivera, and Jordan Carlos Thurman Rivera, goddaughter Angela Pulliam, his beloved Bethesda Baptist Church of New Rochelle family, and a host of other relatives and special friends. Won't you help me praise God for a life well lived in the person of the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. Come on and help me praise God for a life well lived in the person of the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr. Hallelujah. that we've been ascending in this worship experience. We're at an apex moment. I must admit, even as a prelude to the eulogy, I've, I've never met Dr. Howard, but the word is, he and Dr. Weaver go way back to when they were both, both very young in ministry, complimenting pastorates. But again, I, I heard this. Along the way, they made a pact that covered this moment. As Brothers in the Lord, sharing in ministry, they said, looking at each other, whoever goes first, you preach my eulogy. God is good. A genuine friend and brother beloved gets the opportunity, in essence, to say the last word. Thank you, Dr. Howard, for coming. I'll go as far as saying thank you for being a friend to Dr. Weaver. As he prepares to come, let's pray God's anointing and blessings upon him now as Reverend Dr. Leroy Howard will come in eulogistic reflection prelude by Sister Joy Evans singing may the work I've done speak
for me and their works do follow them and their works do follow them We'd like to say good afternoon to everybody. Hope and trust that already your hearts have been made glad in the Lord. Recognizing those who are officiating, those who are part of the Lord's program, and especially to this family at Bethesda. The preacher got up and told everybody they had about two minutes. I hope he'll give me four. <laughs> Amen. And I think anybody who's had a friend will understand that this is nothing you want to take too long to do. But there is a word from the Lord yeah, there is a word from the Lord. And I think my scriptural text today will point to the fact that it won't take that long. Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, 17. Proverbs 17, 17. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. My theme for today, born to be friends, brought together by adversity. Born to be friends, brought together by adversity. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Because when I woke up this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew the Lord would bring me out. So I told Satan, get thee behind. Because victory today is mine. Anybody here? Even in the midst of what's going on right now? Anybody here know that you still got victory in Jesus? If you got victory in Christ, lift your hands and say yes. Born to be friends, brought together by adversity. In the mindset of some, perhaps in the mind of many who are in here today, this is simply a day of loss. Someone in here now is dealing with the loss of a husband, the loss of a father, the loss of a brother, or maybe the loss of a dear and close friend. But I need to tell us or remind us today that although we are dealing with loss, we have not lost anyone. And nothing is lost when you know where it is. Nobody is lost when you know exactly where they are. And especially nobody is lost when you know that they are somewhere around the throne of God. Oh, bless his name. Born to be friends, 
brought together by adversity. Today I stand on the threshold of memory. It was about 59 years ago, long, 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 long ago, that I first met Weaver. We were just boys members of different churches in Florida, from different cities in Florida, yet we are together attending a Sunday school convention. Right. However, we shared a common assignment and destiny. At that time, we were both teenage boys who were licensed preachers, representing our respective home churches. But had it not been for the devil's scheming, had it not been for the devil's trickery, and had it not been for the devil's intervention, we may not have met at that time. But we were born to be friends, brought together by adversity. Adversity that was brought on by the devil's intervention. And here it is. One of the unique features about the Sunday School Convention was that there were classes and classrooms set up for each age group. And every student had to buy their own class books for the week. Even though we had not yet formerly met, Weaver and I were in the same class and in the same classroom. But somebody coined the phrase, one man's misfortune is another man's opportunity. While on a class break, we all left our books at our seats, and that's when the devil got busy. You do know the devil is still busy. When we return, Weaver noticed that his books were missing. A search was made and nobody could find them. And they didn't hand out books for free either. So Weaver didn't have all the money needed to replace the books. So the class and I stepped forward. And with our own funds, we helped Weaver to get books for the section. He and I didn't stop there. Before they started that class, he and I walked out of the room looking, walking around the campus looking for the thief. And God have pity on him if we had found him. But, tell your neighbor, but. It's always a but. We couldn't find him. But from that moment on, a lifelong friendship was born. We hung out together, had each other's back, and went everywhere together. It was then that we discovered that we were born to be friends, brought on by adversity. Oh, bless his name. And what Solomon is saying to each of us today in this proverb is that first of all, a true friend is one who loves you all the time. In the good times, as well in the bad times, and that because of his love for you, he's willing to stand with you in troubled times. And he's seen as a brother who is born to help us in tough times. Yeah, a brother is one who comes alongside to support us, even at the hint of adversity. And that's one of the things Weaver did. He was always concerned about both my wife and I. 
Sometimes I think he had it backwards because he had my wife and then I. <laughs> but he had our health and welfare in mind. Down through the years, God has been good to us, to my wife and I. And he supplied our every need. But I have long noticed about Weaver that when we were together, he is most happiest when he's doing the giving, doing the providing, or just trying to do something good for us. And I soon came to recognize that when Weaver does it, he's not showing out, but he's just showing up as a brother, even at the hint of adversity. He's not showing out, but because of our relationship, because he loves us, he's just trying to make somebody happy. And for over 59 years, I have been happy and blessed to call him my friend and to call him my brother. Now you can call him pastor, reverend, or doctor if you want to. Whatever seems appropriate for you to call him. But when we're not in the pulpit, y'all, I just call him Weaver. Because even in difficult and trying times, he's my friend and my brother. And today as I stand on the threshold of memory, I can hear Weaver preaching one of his signature sermons. Walk in the old way. Walk in the old way. In the sermon, he opens with an assessment of the times and situations that we were all caught up back then. Yeah. And he said to us, these are alarming and disturbing times. Right. Young people and old people alike are searching for the real things in life. I find that it's still true today, especially in a post-COVID environment. Happiness and joy still elude many of us. Today we think that stuff will make us happy and that going somewhere will calm us down, only to find that when we come back, we're still singing that old song of the church. Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. Yeah, so much trouble in my way. I stay awake at night, but I know Jesus will fix it after a while. Oh, it's true. If you call him and let him have his way, he'll fix it after a while. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he? And the reason he'll do it it's because a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Can I get a witness? That Jesus will fix it. And that he'll make a way even out of no way. My time about up. I'm not going to get on his nerves, so I'm soon going to my seat. But I need to put in perspective what exactly happened on that fateful Monday, Juneteenth, when God called Pastor Weaver home. And I believe this poem will put it all in perspective and give us a sense of relief. It's entitled, Go Down Death. Yeah, Go Down Death. Weep not, weep not, he is not dead. He's resting in the bosom of Jesus. Heartbroken family, weep no more. Grief-stricken wife, weep no more. Left lonesome children, weep no more. He's only just gone home. And day before yesterday morning, God was looking down from his great high heaven, 
looking down on all of his children. And his eyes fell on Brother Weaver, tossing on his uncomfortable bed of pain in a place of isolation. And God's big heart was touched with pity, with the everlasting pity. And God sat back on his throne. And he commanded that tall, bright angel standing at his right hand, call me death. And that tall, bright angel cried in a voice that broke like a clap of thunder, call death, call death. And the echo sounded down the streets of heaven till it reached away back, back to that shadowy place where death waits with his pale white horses. And death heard the summons. And he leaped on his fastest horse. Pale as a sheet in the moonlight, up the golden street death galloped. And the hooves of his horse struck fire from the gold. But they didn't make no sound. Up death rode to the great white throne. And there he waited for God's command. And God said, go down, death. Go down. Go down to New Rochelle, down in New York, and find me, Brother Allen. He's borne the burden and the heat of the day. He's labored long in my vineyard, and he's tired. He's weary. Go down, death. Bring Weaver home to me. And death didn't say a word, but he loosed the reins on his pale white horse. And he clamped the spurs to his bloodless sides. And out and down he rode through heaven's pearly gates, past suns and moons and stars, on death road. And the foam of his horse was like a comet in the sky. On death road, leaving the lightning flash behind, straight on down he came. And while loved ones were watching round his bed, he turned his eyes and looked away. He saw what we couldn't see. He saw old death. He saw old death coming like a falling star. But death didn't frighten Brother Allen. Matter of fact, death looked to him like a welcome friend, sent to end the trouble and to stop the pain. And he whispered to himself, I'm going home. He smiled and closed his eyes. Death took him up like a baby. And he lay in his icy arms, but he didn't feel no chill. And death began to ride again, up beyond the evening star, out beyond the morning star, into the glistening light of glory, on to the great white throne. And there he laid Brother Allen on the loving breast of Jesus. And Jesus took his own hand and wiped away his tears and smooth the furrows from his face. And the angel sang a little song, and Jesus rocked him in his arms and kept saying to Alan Paul Weaver, take your rest. Take your rest, Alan Paul Weaver. Take your rest. And now finally for Weaver, the troubles of the world are over. No more pain, no more sickness and stress, nothing but joy over there in the Father's house. And one of these days, when the roll is called up yonder, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saints of the earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I don't know about you, but I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, Will you be there? Roll call is coming. So grieving family, weep not. Weep not. Brother Weaver is not dead. He's just resting in the bosom of Jesus. Grieving family, hold on and hold out. Keep your hand in the winding chain and God will Take care of you. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness that Weaver was right? That these are disturbing and alarming times? 
but somebody here knows that you are not alone. For God said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Now can I get a witness that he'll be a constant companion. He'll be a father for the fatherless and a friend who's sticking closer than a brother. And even though weeping may endure for a night, joy comes in the morning. And so my friend, my brother Weaver, I'll see you in the morning, man. Oh, I'm going to my seat. My time is up. But if I'm going to get over my sadness and depression, I first got to tell God. Then I got to learn how to trust God. And then I got to praise my way through these disturbing times. Well, preacher, that's all nice. Tell him and trust him and praise him. But what do I do when I've told God everything? I'm trusting him to handle it, and I'm praising him too. But nothing seems to be happening. Nothing seems to be making me feel better on a day like this. Well, I need to tell you what to do. And here it is. It was over 2,000 years ago from his cross at Calvary that Jesus asked the same question the psalm is asked. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? But God didn't answer. He made him wait. So right there on the cross of Calvary, Jesus, my other brother, bled and died for our sins. He was taken down and buried in a borrowed tomb. But God didn't answer all day Friday. And all night, Friday night. But he made him wait all day Saturday. And all night, Saturday night. God made him wait. But early, come on church. I said early, Sunday morning, according to the scriptures, God ended the waiting period. God got busy and raised him up. And when he got up, he got up with all authority. He got up with all power in his hand. Oh, ain't God all right? So after you told God first, after you trusted him to handle it, after you praised him for what he's already done and for what he's about to do for you, just wait on him. I said, wait on him. And somebody's a witness that if you wait on him, God will come see about you. Want to do it? Want to do it? Can anybody testify that God will come see about you? Anybody here knows anything about the goodness of God? Has he been good to you? Has he done anything for you? Can I get a witness? Won't God take care of you? Won't he make a way out of no way? If you know he will, lift your hands and say yes. Say yes. Come on, church. Think about what he's done for you. And give God some praise and glory. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Weaver, I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you in the Can I, can I just ask all of you to stand? Thank God for Dr. Howard. Dr. Leroy Howard. Born to be friends.
brought together for adversity. He talked about his friend, Reverend Allen Paul Weaver Jr. And he talked about Jesus. Today, as Alan III spoke to us, I know where we are, I know the setting, but make this moment an eternal moment and say to yourself, I want Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. God bless you today. Thank God for the high praise and worship, the experience in the Holy Ghost we enjoy even now. It's really an attestation, a glorious witness to this great man of God. God bless you today. Amen and amen. I inadvertently uh, did not ask, I, I know we, we this church prepared space for overflow. Was there overflow today? They're in different parts of the building. I don't know. I, uh, and they were viewing us on the screen. But God bless every saint, all who came and shared in this service. We're coming to the conclusion. Sister Weaver, family, our prayers and our support will not end with the benediction of this service. We belong to you. You belong to us. We continue to pray and cover you that God's grace and the comfort and consolation that he alone can give will be yours. Amen. A son in ministry of the Bethesda Church, the Reverend Lamont S. Granby, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Bronxville, New York will come now with the word of committal and I'm going to ask you Reverend Granby to give us the benediction oh there's a song what time is it The Sanctuary Choir of Bethesda Church sings, These Are the Days of Elijah. Peace. 
honor to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the people of God say amen. amen. To the Weaver family, we are in prayer with you and for you. To the body of Christ that has assembled here today to celebrate the life of my pastor. We thank God for the eulogist, Dr. Howard, and for the officiant, Dr. Lowe. Dr. Lowe, you and I met each other when you first came up from South Carolina many years ago. I was slimmer and had hair. And then later on found out that you are my fraternity brother. So I'm leaning on the fraternity shield, and I'm just going to ask for a little bit more time than just to be committal because this is my pastor. In the world of faith movement, Dr. Weaver, my pastor, is the only one who holds all five titles. He baptized me, ordained me as a deacon, licensed me to preach, ordained me as reverend clergy, and then installed me as a 20th pastor of First Baptist Church at Historic Church in Bronxville, New York. He's the only one. The song was penned, you saw the best in me? That was Dr. Weaver. For he saw the best in me. I thank God for everything that he has taught me and shown me in ministry with his quiet head nod and only those from Bethesda can really understand you have to preach at your church and you know this yeah. Dr. Lee one who could take a text with our pencil or paper turned all of us into iPad and, and tech tablet users. He took us to the next level. And it is now my responsibility and honor to take him to the next level. That theologian, Dr. Miller, Dr. Hutchison, Dr. Kilgore, Thomas, Dr. Thomas C. Odin, taught systematic theology. But in his classroom, he often said, it's about the cross. When I was installed, Dr. Weaver preached and spoke on clearly, preach Jesus and him crucified. It's about the cross. So with that being said, the first committal was done on the cross. When our Lord and Savior pronounced those words, Father, into thine hands. I commend my spirit. Signifying we're made up of two parts. We're made up of our physical, our flesh. The other part's our spirit, some say our soul. Our physical and our flesh is what passes away, but our spirit and our soul must go back to our Lord and our God. Because in the beginning of Genesis, God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So if our soul came from God, our soul belongs to God. Since God cannot die, our soul cannot die and must be given back unto our God. Hear now these words. For in as much as it has pleased Almighty God and his wise providence to take out of the world the soul of our beloved, the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. We thereby now commit his body to the elements, earth to earth, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. But we are all looking for that general resurrection in the last day when the earth and the sea shall give up their dead. And those who the bodies that sleep in them shall be made changed and made like unto his own glorious body, whereby the mighty workings he's able to do all things unto himself. John said these words, I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Blessed, blessed, Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. Yea, said the Spirit, for they now rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. 
You may be seated. With all the abundance of preachers and pastors, licensed ministers, bishops, deacons, all those who have said, I've done a committal before. But there are some here who say, I've never done a committal before. And Dr. Weaver would often classify me, and he would say, yes, that's my son, but he's certified. But he's saying certified means I'm certified, he thinks I'm certified crazy at times. But I want to let you know that you've all done a committal before. And someone has looked at me, well, Reverend Grammy, I'm not a reverend, I'm not a pastor, I've never done that before. In a mannerism outside the box, remember these words that you've done a committal, and you can follow along with me. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my what? Soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Saints of God, that's a committal. A way of saying, Lord, if I don't make it in the morning, keep my soul. Dr. Weaver, my pastor, my mentor, his soul is now at the next level. Let's give God some praise for that. The benediction given to us by St. Jude, anointed by Christ, reminding us of our own faults, our own shortcomings, our own imperfections. But more importantly, of God's love and his grace and mercy for each and every one of us. Understand this, even in this sanctuary today, that person to your left or that person to your right, one day you may need them or they may need you. So we acknowledge each other. Jesus said we must love one another. He didn't say the word like. Because some days, even in the church body, we wake up and we don't like somebody. But you have to love them as Christ has loved you. The words are pronounced. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. amen. Please hold your place. To the Weaver family, we exit this sanctuary, complimented by the leadership of Bethesda, all members of clergy sharing. If it is your desire, we will wait on you. You want to recess with us or are you going to remain? Okay, let's, let's share together. Members of the clergy who share. With the designated pallbearers, please join us right outside the sanctuary. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. I was brought low and he helped me. This is my comfort. Affliction. Blessed are you that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. 